you've been training for quite a while in the gym very consistently. This can range from months to even years and props to you. Many people can even get consistent in the gym. So just by doing that, you're already so far ahead of everyone. Problem is not that you're not consistent, it's that you're not progressing. You've hit a plateau. But in this video, I want to highlight five major problems I made throughout my journey that caused me to plateau for an extremely long time. All right, so number one is very simple, not implementing progressive overload. You're going to the gym very consistently, but you're doing the same exercises with the same amount of weight and reps. You're not consistently trying to add more weight or add more reps in. This is the problem with me. I did the same weights for extremely long time. This might've worked at the beginning because of newbie gains. Once newbie gains ran out, again, I didn't progress. So by just adding more weight, adding more reps in, well, you're going to be able to progressively overload and progressive overload is what leads to progression because you get stronger, you'll be able to pack on more muscle, you're giving your body a new stimulus, but adding extra resistance. So please implement progressive overload. All right. So number two is not training to failure or intensely. See, most of your sets might look like this, you know, you're still Again, it's pretty good that you're still exercising in the first place. However, you could have done so much more. You could have pushed yourself so much more. In fact, what enlists the most muscle growth and strength building potential is not these first reps, rather the last two to three reps. These reps are what initiate the most stimulus for your brain in order to produce more strength, more muscle, etc. By training to muscular failure, you're pushing your muscle extremely hard. However, this does not mean to ego lift. Choose a reasonable weight, a reasonable rep range. Again, apply progressive overload while training intensely to failure. All right, so tip number three is not focusing on the major compound movements. By compound movements, I mean movements that initiate more than one muscle group at once. Engage the core are usually freestanding and are probably free weights and not really machines. By this, some great examples are dips, pull-ups, and the conventional squat, bench, and deadlift. And other notable examples are Olympic lifts as well, like the clean and jerk and power clean. Why do you need to focus on compound movements? Well, compound movements are the best bang for your buck. They're the most efficient as they hit multiple muscle groups at once. You can easily progressively overload with them. It's much easier to progressively overload with a bench press than a tricep extension. Same with other movements, they can be taken to failure and maximized for hypertrophy, strength gain, or both. Now, there's a lot of hate with compound movements simply saying from bodybuilders that because they require too much stability but this is what makes compound movements so great a side effect is that compound movements are extremely functional due to the stability demand when you're picking up a heavy box there's no machine there's no leg wraps you don't have no lifting belt there is no stability demand by working compound movements you're able to translate that strength in the gym outside the gym so that's what makes compound movements amazing as well so number four is not warming up I personally didn't warm up a lot at the beginning and I could get away with it because I wasn't using that heavy of weights. However, once I increased weights over time, warming up became extremely essential. Number one is that it maximizes strength output. By not warming up your body, by doing the heaviest movements with your joints cold, again, you're not able to move that much weight because your body isn't ready and you're gonna fail, not because your muscles hit muscular failure, it's because maybe your joints start hurting. And number two is that it actually minimizes injury risk. See, plateauing is not just making no progress, it's about avoiding injury, because if you're injured, you can't train, and therefore, no progress. By warming up, you're able to perform a movement quite effectively, maximize strength output, and avoid well, the weight falling down because your body isn't ready. By pre-preparing your body by warming up, you minimize injury risk and maximize strength output. And number five, this is by far the most major mistake I've ever made is sticking to the same workout routine for months and months and months. Now, generally you want to stick to a singular workout that's amazing and effective. By switching up your workouts weekly or even daily at some points, well, you're not able to reap the best benefits from that singular workout. However, sticking to a workout plan, sticking to the same amount of weights, amount of reps, and most of all, the same exercises will do you no good. It is recommended that you switch up your workouts every four to six weeks. Now, this doesn't mean completely scrap out your current workout. If your current workout is amazing, here's what you need to do. Keep your compound movements the same. Focus on progressive overload on them. And if you're continuously progressing in weight or reps or whatever you are on those movements, it's great. You don't have to change them. They're already amazing. 
Changing up your isolation movements is best. For example, instead of doing a regular dumbbell bicep curl, you can do it, for example, on a cable machine. I didn't change up my workout plans for months. And by doing this, I used the same movements, same exercises, and the same weight. So changing up your workouts, that means changing up, keeping your compound movements the same, maybe changing up the isolation movements, but most importantly, changing up the rep ranges and also isolation movements are the best. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did enjoy, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And please check out my other videos, and please leave a comment if you found this information really helpful. I really appreciate it. I'm a small content creator. Thank you for watching.